Hey everyone, in this video we are going to look at how to integrate Flare into Flutter. Flare is a new tool released by Two Dimensions to assist with vector graphic design and animation. The tool exports a binary that can be used as an asset within your Flutter application. Then with a Flare widget you can reference the binary and do some manipulation on the animation. Disclaimer, there isn't good documentation for any of this as of yet. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I suspect they're still working out some of the kinks or they might plan on changing the way it is used in the future. Hopefully the great people working on the Flutter docs can get involved in this. But for now, my guess is as good as yours on how to properly do Flutter integration. That out of the way, let's get started. So here we have the main page for Two Dimensions with their two products, Nima and Flare. As this description says, Nima is their animation tool for raster graphics and Flare is their new offering to do vector graphics and animations. So to give you a quick idea, raster images are made out of pixels while vector images are mathematical calculations that define the shape of the image. Essentially what that means is no matter how much you scale a vector image, it will always remain crisp and clear while a raster image loses detail as you zoom into the individual pixels or as you scale the image to be of a certain size. Um, so vector images are more ideal for logos and for example within applications where multiple different screen sizes need to be supported. So instead of including multiple different raster images for different screen sizes, now you will only need one vector image and it will scale according to the desired screen size. So for the purpose of mobile um, application development, having a tool that manipulates vector graphics and, vector anim and does vector animations, that is a big deal and that is why we are looking into Flare and why Flare is a, um, a very interesting tool available for Flutter. To integrate Flutter, it seems fairly simple. They also give us a couple of examples in the usage, they say it's the easiest way to just use the provided Flare Actor widget. And then if we want to change the animation, um, all you need to do is to, to change the current name and then update the state of the app. As of now, there are more tutorials on using Nima and how to integrate Nima into Flutter than there is for Flare. The best resources I came across were some example integrations within their Flare Flutter GitHub repository, and we will take a look at those later on. To begin, we're going to code an application together that uses this Flare animation provided by Two Dimensions. Let's take a look at the actual animation within Flare. Um, I've already created an account on Two Dimensions and forked this Flare animation so I can work on and download my own export of the, of the file. So if we click your files and then go to example, it will take us to the Flare editor. Here you can see the file has loaded and we can go to setup. And in setup, there is an artboard. And within artboard, there are a number of different attributes or things that essentially build the layout that we see to the right. As you see, as we drag across these, it highlights different skeletons and parts of the vector graphic. So if we go to animate, here you will see there are two animations, build and fade out and build. So if we play build, you can see that it does the this flare animation. And if we go to build and fade out, it will do a different animation. It will do the animation where this guy who's waving appears. So these names are important. Later when we um, integrate this within Flutter, we will reference these names to call the different animations available within our Flare file. So after playing around, we would like to export this Flare file. We would choose Flutter as the engine and binary, click export, and then our file is ready to be used and integrated within Flutter. Okay, so for our demo, to start off, we will create a new folder called Assets. 
And in the assets folder, we will drag in our example.flare file. This is the binary file that was export, exported by Flare. Next in our papsec.yaml, we will uncomment assets and reference this asset file that we just dragged in. Then for our dependencies, we will add flare.flutter. Hit save and see if it's giving any errors. Then we will quickly create like an example stateless app, call it flare demo, remove the app bar, hit run and wait for it to load up. Okay, it is loaded. And then within our column, we will add a flare actor. We will need to import the flare actor package. Next, we will need to reference the asset file. This is a required attribute for the flare actor widget. Then we can set the alignment to be center and we can set, set the box fit to contain. For the animation, we will give it a string variable, which we will define above. We will set this animation name variable equal to build. As you will remember, that was the name of the animation. As you can see, it is currently giving an error. It is um, giving it a constraint error. If we wrap this flare actor widget in a container and give it a width of 100 and a height of 100, we can see it no longer gives the error and it's contained to, to um, that container size. Let's remove that. And instead of saying container, we will change it to expanded so that it uses the maximum available space. And there we have it. We have our animation going and it is currently showing the build animation. Next, we will add two buttons. So we will create a row. The one will be called build. And the other will be called build and fade. This will trigger the second animation. So in the on pressed, we will call set state. And we will set the animation name variable equal to build and fade out. This needs to be typed exactly as it is within the flare editor. Then within the other on pressed function, we will set the animation name equal to build. Hit save. Do a quick alignment, center alignment. And as we can see, if we hit build and fade out, it changes the animation to the complete animation with the build of the second character. And there we have it. If we click build now, you can see that the second character has frozen into place. I'm not too sure why this is. And um, you'll see now if we click build and fade out, it removes it again, it restarts that entire animation. I'm not sure if this is intentional or if it's some issue or some bug. But yeah, playing around with the flare actor widgets attributes, if we specify a different fit, for example, box fit dot fill, you can see it stretches it out to fill as much space as space as it can. While cover does something else, I would assume that takes up all the space. Fit height, it just fits the height. Fit width, as you'd expect, it goes and fits it against the width or the available width. Scale down, doesn't look like it changes anything. And then the contain one would mean it, it is contained within the available space. Next, if we change the color, for example, colors.red, it would change all of the vector graphics, except for the flare logo. I'm not too sure why. Maybe it's some opacity value. In a later example, I will show you how we can 
reference certain nodes and just change the colors for certain vector attributes. Is paused set to true? It would pause the animation. False would make it continue. Should clip, I'm not too sure what this does. I could not see any difference in the animation with should clip set to true or should clip set to false. Callback, this I would assume gets called when the animation is finished. So if we do an example of printing to the console, what the value is that gets passed when the callback is triggered, we can see if we can observe anything happening. Fast forward, I tried to look, I changed the animation, um, but yeah, I did not observe any values that got printed. So I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's because this animation is in a loop. It doesn't trigger the callback that it's finished. I am not too sure. But yeah, that is it. Fairly easy to implement once you have the animation file. Still a lot that is left to be discovered about this tool set and how to use it. Um, in the next couple of examples, we will go through some examples that are available in the Flare and Flutter repository. I am excited about Flare. I haven't actually used the editor myself. All I've done is um, do some research into how it is used and how it is integrated within Flutter. But yeah, I mean, the possibilities um, of having a, a vector engine and having it so easily integrated within Flutter, and that is pretty cool. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm planning on, on doing a couple of things, um, having some fun with Flare and Flutter together. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. See you next time.